Hi Cancer Sun, Moon, Ascendant or Venus, this is Dane and I'm going to be doing your June 2020 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. So let's dive into this moon and see what it has to say. The time period of this reading is from full moon to full moon, so from June 5th to July 5th and let's see what's going on. I'm going to be moving your Queen of the Moon and your Moonology cards over to the side. These are going to give Vuna, Vuna, Luna a voice of her own. There we go, the voice of Luna, Vuna, as I am now calling it. It's going to be layered on top of the tarot to really see how the moon connects with your emotional state and what messages the moon has for you. Okay, this will be at the end. And let's see what the tarot has to say. And then I have everything set up here for the moon, for the full moon, the new moon, and the next full moon. And what's really cool about this time is that we have two lunar eclipses on both full moons, which is super awesome. And then we have a solar eclipse on the new moon. So this is going to be just an energy filled and highly impactful time. It's going to be a time of baking, breaking boundaries, of really looking at what you want and really pushing yourself forward and being passionately involved with where you want to be, where you want to be and what you stand for. How will cancer be affected by the June 2020 full moon? How will cancer be affected by the June 2020 full moon? How will cancer be affected by the June 2020 full moon? Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. At the heart of everything, we have the four of swords, the four of air. You are crowned by the tower. That makes perfect sense, and that's powerful. You have the moon coming through. This is a Pisces energy, a time frame of February 19th to March 20th. The ten of earth, which is beautiful. The king of air, an air sign energy, a Gemini, a Libra, and Aquarius. We have temperance right here, which is the... I'm sorry, not temperance, temptation, which is the devil card. This is a Capricorn energy, December 22nd to January 19th. And then we have the six of air, the eight of water with the tower. That's powerful. Oh, wow. This moon is really going to be shaking things up for you. The 10 of water. I love that you have the repeat of the number 10 here. You're really stepping into a new cycle. You're almost, you actually, you're claiming a new you. So there's going to be kind of like new life, new me, you know, kind of, energy around you, which is really fun. And then we have the three of earth, the three of pentacles. That's cool. Okay. Yeah, you're seeing a completion of a cycle and it's kind of stepping towards your happily ever after. It might not be completely embracing it right now, but with the 10 of water sets and they all live happily ever after, the 10 of earth is wealth that lasts for generations. So it's a really powerful statement that's coming here with this repeat. And it leads you to the king of earth. It leads you to really knowing your mind. It can be that you're setting really healthy boundaries for yourself and a really healthy understanding of what you desire and the way that you want to move forward. And you're really not going to be putting up with other people's bull. Now, why is that? That's because this is the truth telling and truth seeking moon of the visionary Sagittarius. And that's what you're embracing right here. And we see it within these cards. We see it within the full moon in Sagittarius. You are like the bow and arrow right here. You are taking aim. And the thing is with the bow and arrow and especially the crossbow in medieval times, that's like the most deadly weapon that they had before the, the creation of the gun. So here you are looking at the bigger picture. You are taking aim of what you want. And because of the lunar eclipse that's coming in, you're stepping out of your comfort zone and you're saying, listen, the way to go after what I desire and where I want to be is to push myself, is to take that leap of faith, is to go after me. And so here you have extremes. And this moon here, it's called the hot moon in the queen of the moon cards. But in the farmer's albanac, this is the strawberry moon. So there's a sweetness to, to you and to this moon during this time, Cancer. But there's also an intensity to you, a passion and a power. And it leads you to the full moon eclipse, which says conclusions are within reach. You're going to be seeing duality of things. You're also going to be looking at how hard you've worked and how much you've overcome. And also knowing where to step back and when to step back to really go after what you desire during this moon. There's a huge change that is around you where it's kind of like ready or not, here it comes. And for you, 
Cancer, it's going to be something beautiful. It really is. Now, it's moving you towards an opening of communication because, yeah, because June is ruled by Mercury. And so here there's an opening of communication. There's a sense of stepping into power. There's a sense of, you know, looking and setting flight to what you want. And as you do so, you're embracing the power of this full moon. So with the Queen of the Moon and the Moonology cards, it says here, power and a surrendering to the divine. So as you surrender to your divine guidance, as you surrender to your passion and your desire, as you surrender to the God's head within you, and the fact that we're all made up of, of stardust and that you are kind of like a part of the cosmos, you're surrendering to that power and to those infinite possibilities. You're also opening yourself up to a almost transcendental experience, a kind of a kind of moving into another reality, a sense of opening up the doors to what you thought might only have been fairy tale or what you thought was made for other people, but not you. But as you open this door, you are going to find by the 21st of June, which is when the new moon is with the solar eclipse, you are moved towards the embracing power of this new moon, which is of course the cancer new moon, which absolutely calls to you. And it says you and your loved ones are safe, which is a severe, point of power for you during this time. So for you, Cancer, you have such a heart. You're represented by the chariot. You have such a heart to you. You have this force for what you love. And the funny thing is, it's like people might sit there and say, oh, okay, you know, Cancer, you're, you're easygoing. You're super sweet. You're super kind. And they, they look at you and think, okay, that. But when they come up against you, when it's for something that you love, when it's for people that you've dedicated your life to, when it's for the calling or the vocation of your soul. You tend to have more vocations than other signs do. So when they come up against that, oh my gosh, you're a force. You're a force and they don't know how to deal with you. So here, when you are entering into this, this new moon, you are going to see yourself really focusing on making sure that you and your loved ones are safe, secure, moving forward in positivity, kind of overcoming hurdles. Do not get too caught up though in making sure everybody else is safe and not and forgetting about yourself and not yourself. So here with this new moon, you are, are really looking at what you love, what you desire, and the doorway is opening up for you because it's a time of beginnings. And it's also a time of knowing that a new start is coming because you're seeing yourself walk through the doorway. And I'm just so drawn to the God Janus during this time. And this is the God of January. That's actually where January gets its name from. And with Janus, he's the God of beginnings and endings. And that's what's a powerful time for this visionary moon for you, is that you are embracing beginnings and endings, this visionary expansion, this sense of, I will not be held back by the expectations of others. I move forward in the power of this, you know, of this new moon, of this solar eclipse, of this sense of the shading of light to have the connection with my soul come forward. And as you do this, Cancer, as you embrace this way of loving, this way of being, it really gets you ready. Oh my goodness, of course they fall down. It really gets you ready for the July full moon, which is on July 5th, and it is the moon of change. Now it's called the thunder moon here, but in the farmer's almanac, it's called the buck or the stag moon. And this is a moon that of course represents a male deer, right? But it, bucks and stags, they represent majesty. They represent power. That's why Bambi's father, and you know, the Disney movie, he's the king of the forest because he is a buck. So here you are representing this energy, this energy of power and understanding. You will be stepping into a, a time period where with July that is ruled by the moon, all right? And so you're going to be stepping into the power of mysteries. And as you do so, the end of a tough cycle approaches, the end of hardships, pains, and disappointments, as you know them. It doesn't mean that they're never going to be there again, and all of a sudden life is going to be roses and butterflies. It means that one tough cycle is going to be ending. And that's what we see here. We see you really ending a cycle to move forward in knowledge and in understanding and in this connection of your heart to your mind, which is going to be absolutely beautiful and is absolutely powerful. It changes things. 
it changes things for you. And it has you embracing the spirit animals of June. And the spirit animals of June are so cool because they're so contrasting. So in June, you have the deer spirit and the eagle spirit. The deer spirit says here, bring a gentle touch. And the deer spirit represents gentleness, but not defenseless, this defenselessness. There we go. And so as you're embracing gentleness and also understanding that being gentle doesn't mean that you're defenseless or doesn't mean that you're weak. It means that you're bringing a different power to the table. And as you're doing this, a kind of a heart's power to the table, which is usually where you come from. Actually, just thinking about it right now, Cancer, this is like your spirit animal. This is an animal that really does represent a lot of you because it's being gentle without being defenseless. It's knowing when to be strong and brave, but not having to sit there and prove yourself every five seconds. And as you embrace this, you embrace your natural beauty and it just shines forward. It radiates forward. And as it does, it embraces a degree of innocence. And that's where people underestimate you. They see this innocence or this purity to you, this kind of love of life, this earth motherness, this, you know, kind of sinking your feet into the soils mentality. And it doesn't mean that you have to be an earthy person. It can mean that you, you know, love city life or, you know, it doesn't even mean, yeah, that you love city life or something like that. But it means that there's this kind of rooted genuineness to you. That's what I see when I see an earth mother. It doesn't mean that they actually have to be a mother or, you know, be female or anything like that. It's just this earthiness to you and this kind of rooting to yourself that moves you forward. And as you're embracing this, you know, you're embracing this peacefulness because, of course, deers are herbivores, but you're also embracing a ferocity. Eagles are carnivores, but they're also a connection with the divine since eagles can fly higher than any other bird. And here it says, spirit has your back. And one of the reasons why spirit has your back is because first of all, eagles can fly higher than any other bird. So you're seeing your spirit being able to soar higher than you can even imagine. And then we have the fact that birds of prey are better sight hunters than, than humans. Humans are apex sight hunters. We are like the best sight hunters out there except when it comes to birds of prey. So here, it's not only that spirit can fly higher than you, can soar to greater heights, but it's that spirit can see more clearly than you can. And that's a very powerful thing during this time because this is a time of freedom and of courage and of truth and of having pride in the honesty of yourself, which moves you to that genuineness and that gentleness. And now during July, with the spirit animals for July, I do not have a single one of them in my deck. So I do have stand-ins. It's the woodpecker spirit and the salmon spirit, which are absolutely gorgeous. The woodpecker spirit is seeking to re rekindle the passion of your truth. All right. What that means is that you're looking at yourself. And for the woodpecker spirit, I have two, bir two birds, two animals standing in, the bear spirit and the hummingbird spirit. So the bear spirit really represents the woodpecker spirit in a way that it's like you're not going to stand for bullies. You're not going to stand for people picking on those who are weaker. That's really going to be a pet peeve for you in July. It's going to be something where you sit there and you're like, listen, people need to be honored. And you're kind of going to be that protector, that protector of the small during July. That is really quite beautiful. And that's where the the bear spirit comes in because that's what the bear spirit is all about. And here it says, take time out. Take time out to protect those weaker. Take time out to connect with yourself and your soul. And then it moves you to the hummingbird spirit because there is this ferocity to the hummingbird spirit, well, to the hummingbird. Hummingbirds can actually take out eagles because they're so nimble, they're so fast, and they're so powerful. So here it says, be here now. So as you're embracing your power, as you're embracing your truth, as you're rekindling your passion for your truth, you move forward in purpose and in determination. And as you do so, the salmon spirit then comes into play, which I have the koi spirit standing in for, because the salmon spirit is all about rebirth and moving forward and happiness and enlightenment and this beautiful feminine energy around you, this energy of creation. And it moves you towards the, the sense of love surrounding you. It moves you towards love, which just brings me to the koi fish spirit that says there is always enough. It's kind of like the nightingale spirit also where love is all around you. So here you know that there is always enough and that there's a sense of luck because there's a sense of love and nothing is more powerful than love in this world that guides us forward. 
And this is what leads you to the Four of Swords. And the Four of Swords being right at your heart is a very intense card to have because the Four of Swords, oh, excuse me, I do have kind of allergies right now. The Four of Swords is showing that you have been through a war and you need to take time to rest. So that's where the Bear Spirit also comes in with take time out and then the Hummingbird Spirit be in the now. So as you rest, as you step back, as you connect with your soul, you need to take time out of the hugaboo of everything. And you need to connect with your present, what you desire, what you truly want. And as you do so, you then move to the Ten of Waters, the Ten of Cups. So the Ten of Cups shows you connecting with what you love, shows you connecting with your happily ever after. Now you've been through a battle. So you might be sitting there and saying, Dane, you know, how can I move past every single war that I have been through, every single hardship, disappointment, pain, frustration that I have been through in my life to embrace my prosperity, my success, my abundance, my happily ever after. It seems like the furthest thing from me. And that makes perfect sense. It really, really does. There is a sense here of your mind and your heart coming together. And that's where things are crumbling. All right. So it's not that when your mind and your heart come together, things crumble. It means here that you're looking at things emotionally and personally, and you're seeing this move, this moon be a tremendous shift for you. It's a tremendous shift towards what you desire. It's a tremendous shift where you start to really take note of everything that you've been through. And instead of saying, well, it wasn't a big deal. Oh my gosh, there's so much worse in this world. You know, everything like that. You're giving yourself the honor and the respect that you deserve. You're taking care of you. Sleeping is important. There is a sense here, Cancer, with not liking to sleep. I'm just seeing that right now because I myself have this problem. I don't like to sleep because it's like I can't take care of things when I'm sleeping. And it's not that I don't sleep. It's just that I think, oh my gosh, I can't take care of what needs to be taken care of because I'm asleep. And I see that energy coming forward. And it's something that I really have to work on, you know, and work with, which sounds so silly to say. But it's something like that. It's like you've been through battles and you know that there's a feeling like I have to be on. And that's what you're bringing to the table, Cancer. It's like I have to be on because I have to know how to smooth over the waters. I have to know how to bring that rest and peace to others. Well, what about bringing that rest and peace to yourself, Cancer? Because as you bring that rest and peace to yourself, as you create a calm, harmonious, beautiful world for you, you start stepping into what you love. And that love radiates from you. It's like a beacon. And as that love radiates from you, it leads you to the tower. And you might sit there and say, no, not the tower. I mean, that's not what I want. But what's really interesting is that you have 15 and then 16. Okay, so you have the devil card, which has us facing addictions, pains, disappointments, hurts, what society expect us, expects of us and what we expect of ourselves. And the, one of the things here that is so beautiful for you is that the moon is ruled, is really connected, and Sagittarius is really connected by the goddess Artemis. And why is this important? It's because the goddess Artemis is the, god of, uh, the goddess of the hunt and the moon. And that's why we have the bow and arrow here. You're hunting, you're expressing, you're facing fears, and you're moving forward. And it's kind of like you're taking the world into your own hands, even if that means extremes. So why I say this is because Artemis was the virgin goddess. And so there was a sense of not letting any of her power go to anybody else. Now, I'm not saying that that has to be the road that you take, though if it's a road that you choose, you know, it's, it's your life and you choose the path that is right for you. And so here, there is this sense of during this time, you're really going to head towards extremes to make what you want in your life possible. There is this sense of embracing your freedom, but it can also be that as you embrace your freedom, you need to embrace what your soul is craving. So that can lead you, that can lead you to extremes during this time because you're having the old you crumble away and you're having a new you take your place. This is a sense of change and being ready for a change. And so here, as you are ready for a change, as you have this change coming into your life, this is divinity taking over. It's saying, ready or not, here's this change and it is a part of you and you are a part of it. And this is going to be a transformative part that takes over during the month of June. There is a sense of moving towards a greater vision, moving towards your greater truth, and there's a sense of stepping out of 
an old shell, an old self, to embrace the power that you want within your life, that you need and crave. And it leads you to the eight of water. It leads you to this walking away from what you once thought you would love. And it leads you to as you walk away from the one, what you once thought you would love. Okay, this is the base of the triangle right here, the tower and the eight of waters. The tip of the triangle is the moon. It leads you to the moon. You find guidance at night, but you'll also find serenity and rejuvenated powers during slumber, right? During times of quiet. So don't downplay that because you're going to have a tendency just to want to push yourself further and further, connect deeper and deeper with what you desire, what you want, what is needed within your life. And so it can be very easy for you to just kind of push through things and say, all right, well, I have goals. I'm going to go after these goals and that's what I'm going to achieve. And emotionally, you're going to be very connected with everybody else, but not with yourself. So with the moon, as you move forward, as you connect with this power, it's like you're rooting yourself to your truth. And there has to be this flow of communication between your heart and your mind during this time. Why is that important? I am of the firm belief that we are emotional beings. As emotional beings, we need to connect with our hearts. Now, this is more, much more easy for water sign energies than I do feel that it's than any other sign, right? It's water sign and air sign energies, and then earth and fire, you know, come, come next. But here, there is a sense of needing to connect with your heart. And as you connect with your heart, you call upon this Pisces energy, this kindness, this duality, this sense of perfection guiding you. You, yeah, it's, it's perfection that guides you because that's what Pisces wants. And as you move past fear, I mean, that's what everybody wants, their idea of perfection. It's kind of like everybody has pretty much the same goals, just the way that we boil it down to getting it is quite different. So here, this is a time frame, February 19th to March 20th. There is a sense of needing to face fears or getting scared about changes that come in rather easily. Looking at the wars that you have been through, just the wars of living, right? And seeing the change that has brought you forward to where you are now. And it's looking at things and it's saying, can I have what my heart wants? And it's like, yes, but you have to leave something behind. And it's not something that is devastating. It is something that you know doesn't fit. It's kind of like being Cinderella, and it's like the old Cinderella story. So it's wanting your foot to fit into that slipper so bad. Like her stepsisters wanted their foot to fit into that slipper so bad that they cut off their toes, one cut off their toes, and one cut off their heels. It's like that's, that's the sense here where it feels like you're actually harming yourself to be in the life or to, be, to walk a road that is no longer yours, that no longer fits, and you know it. I'm just using an extreme example because there's something darkly, like, just intriguing about the original Cinderella story. So here, you're looking at it. You're looking at what you need. You're looking at what you want. You're finding a balance, but you're also claiming your mind. So you are having a kingful force to you during this time, meaning people are seeing you, and people are seeing your mind for the beauty that it is. So here with the king of air, you are embracing you're understanding, you are cutting through doubts and fears, you are knowing what you stand for. This is truth really being a cornerstone of yourself, the telling of the truth, the seeking of the truth, it's at your roots. It builds you. It moves you forward in prosperity. It moves you forward towards your prosperity. It has you looking at things in a new light. You're not going to be able to abide liars. Liars just in general, but also the lies that we tell ourselves. You're going to sit there and be really quick cancer to call yourself out on things. It's kind of like, well, if I love this, why am I going, why aren't I going after it? Or why am I sabotaging myself this way? There's such clear sight that comes to you during this time that it can be overwhelming and you can have a tendency to use that as a weapon against yourself to feed on negativity or hardships and pains that were spoken over you. So just be mindful of that because you really are working to create prosperity, bounty, beauty, and success within your existence and within yourself. And that has you kind of needing to step back and say, I know what I stand for. I know where I stand and I know what I desire because you're looking the devil straight in the eye. Now, the devil is this transformative power, okay? The devil rules earth is really how I see it. And that's why with, these, with Jesus going into, not to get religious on people, but with Jesus going into you know, the desert and the devil saying, I can give you everything. It's kind of like the only thing you have to lose is yourself. 
what's important to you. And then you can have everything you can imagine. And here, it's kind of like that, te te that temptation coming forward. And it's so intense that it kind of, it kind of gives me chills and it gets me a bit tongue tied where I'm seeing here, it's kind of like you are looking at what you desire, but you're also looking at the chains of what has hold, held you back. So, or what holds you back. And here you're laying on top of knowledge and love and it brings wealth. So to connect with your knowledge, your mind and your heart is what I'm seeing. You move forward in the wealth of what you desire, but you are going to, again, be very quick to call yourself out on things, but also to, to see what has held you back. So during this time, as you're moving forward and as you're calling yourself out and being sometimes a bit harsh on you, Cancer, you're going to have that tendency. You might find it when you're being really hard on yourself to be easy, to want to slip back to old addictions, okay? Now, these are the addictions that we think of when we think of addictions and, you know, meetings and stuff like that, alcohol, drugs, sex, food, shopping, those type of things, all right? But this is also the addiction of people-pleasing. This is addiction of putting people's emotions above your own. This is the addiction of not feeling good enough. This is the addiction of self-doubt. I mean, that comes out highly when facing the moon. We are afraid of the shadows of the unknown. And so we doubt ourselves as we move forward. And that's what the devil card is having us face. And so here, Cancer, when you're looking at your heart's truth, when you're looking at yourself, when you're looking at what you desire, you're looking at what has been holding you back. And you're going to see a shift and a change that guides you. You're going to see something that becomes more. And you're going to see you becoming more. But first it starts. And yeah, you start embracing the wealth that you want by seeing what has held you back or the expectations of others that were spoken over you, the truth of society that isn't your truth. And being embarrassed. There's something about you, Cancer, where you're looking at what you want and you're thinking, oh my gosh, everybody's going to laugh or nobody's really going to understand where I come from. And that can be just a few of you cancers, but as a person who was astoundingly afraid that everybody would laugh if I follow my dreams, I know how crippling that can be and how devastating that is. So don't let that become the narrative that takes over your life. It's like, feel the fear and do it anyway. And as you do so, that's when you step into wealth and abundance. That's when you have wealth that lasts for generations. Now this is money or something you value as much as money. And being an emotionally stable person who can embrace love and joy and happiness and beauty is wealth that most people do not have in their lives. So here with the 10 of earth, it's like embrace the wealth, embrace the prosperity of what you desire. Look at it and claim it because it will be passed on through your DNA line or through your interactions with people. It doesn't mean you have to go out and have kids. It's like through the way you interact with people, it will affect the next generation. It will affect the people that you come in contact with. And that is beautiful. And I see that here happening with prosperity, wealth, what you value as much as money, kind of opening doors up for people, sitting there and having them believe in themselves or you know, saying the right words of encouragement that really open doors. And also this connection with love, this connection with you know, raising people's energy vibration, but also raising your own energy vibration to say, listen, the world operates down here. It's very base. You know, it's very instant gratification. I want more. I want grat gratification that lasts for an eternity, that leads me towards dreams and goals and desires and, and love and prosperity. And as you see this and as you say this, you're balancing. You're balancing your truths. You're looking at what you desire. You're reaching, you're creating, you're cultivating. You're spiraling things all together to say, this is my prosperity. This is what I stand for. And this is where I stand. And as you do so, we have the six of air coming in. And the six of air is taking your knowledge and moving forward. It's taking what you desire and being guided by it. And with the six of air, I really see this as almost a transcendent time for you. It really actually, yeah, as a transcendent time for you. So as you're looking at what you love, as you're looking at what you desire, as you gather your knowledge and your understanding to move yourself forward, you are transcended from the person that you once were to the person that you want to be. So there is that transitional time where you feel like you're kind of floating in space. But there is this book that a friend of mine had me read. He's like, listen, it is awesome. I will try to remember to put the link down below to the YouTube of it. I think it's on YouTube. Yeah. 
Um, he then showed me that, which I was like, oh, dude. Um, so here, there is this sense of moving towards what you desire and what you want, and knowing that it doesn't always have to be a battle, but that we can move from one reality to another. That if you look at things kind of like there are multiple realities, there are multiple existences within this world, or string theory, right? There are multiple existences, there are multiple dimensions. Why can't I move into the one where I am successful? So it doesn't mean that you have to, like, it doesn't have to be as big of a challenge. You can claim your future and you can see it and you can say, well, this in this reality, this is me being successful and you can step into it. But it's not having the doubt and the fear that holds you back. So it's kind of like positive thinking, it's kind of like manifestation, but it's also changing the reality around you. And I really see that as something that's kind of cool. It was really hard for me to wrap my head around, but the more I think of it, I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. And don't we change our realities every time we face a hurdle, a hardship, a pain, a disappointment that holds us back? Don't we change our realities when we face demons? And so here, that's what you're doing as you're moving forward with your knowledge, with your understanding. And it moves you to facing your fears, but also embracing a tremendous beauty that is the reflection of the sun, that is this quiet, you know, sense of serenity, power, you know, grace that has its ebb and flow, that has its phases and its faces. And that's what you're embracing during this time. It's kind of like, I have the ability and I have the power to change, develop, and become. And that is what I'm embracing. And as you do so, it leads you to the eight of waters. It leads you towards walking away from what once fit. It's like it once was beautiful, but it's not that anymore because you have evolved and you have changed. And it's letting yourself know that like, that's part of life and living. And don't hold yourself you know, in a sense of anger or disappointment in you because you want this change, because you need to leave the past behind. And as you do so, you have the Ten of Waters, love, joy, prosperity, success coming in, this sense of power, the sense of beauty. So let's see what Luna has to say. How will cancer be affected by the June 2020 full moon? How will cancer be affected by the June 2020 full moon? How will cancer be affected by the June 2020 full moon? Oh, goodness. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. All right. How will cancer be affected by the June 2020 full moon? How will cancer be affected by the June 2020 full moon? How will cancer be affected by the June 2020 full moon? Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. Show me clearly. Okay, so there is a real step during this moon as you embrace your visionary self, as you embrace kind of this new dimension of you, you step out of your comfort zone in a huge way. And so here with discernment, it's kind of like, what do I want? I'm being discerning with myself as I move myself forward because I know that I, I need to rest, I need to connect with my heart, my mind, my soul, to guide me towards what is greater. So it's kind of like, don't push. You're going to have a tendency to really want to push, but you need to be gentle with yourself. You need to be kind and compassionate. As kind and compassionate as you would be with others, you have to be for you. It's a have to. It's going to be so important because then it leads you to stepping out of your comfort zone as you embrace what you love, and it's going to bring you to happiness. It's going to bring you to joy, but it's also going to be that uncomfortableness that you're looking at and you're saying, okay, fine, you know, I am ending a cycle and I am embracing what I love, need, and desire. And as you do so, you're just hungry. 
you're hungry for the change, even though the change can be terrifying at times. You are hungry for it. You are calling for it. And you are answering the call of yourself. It's kind of like this innate primal call for this change coming into your life, for stepping into this new reality of self. And that leads you to knowing that prosperity lies ahead as you make this shift, as you step out of, of a comfort zone, as you step out of what you had once. Uh, it's, it's like stepping away from a preconceived notion or it's looking at the pair of shoes and being like, wow, they're gorgeous, but they hurt. All right. And why am I going to stick my feet into shoes that absolutely make it so I can't walk? You know, I can't move forward just because they're pretty. And that's what I'm seeing here. It's like, why am I torturing myself? And once you stop, prosperity lies ahead and it leads you to a void. It leads you to a vast unknown as you connect with your mind and the power of your knowledge, the power of what you want to create, the power of where you stand and what you stand for, which brings you to a time of healing. It brings you to a time of compassion as you see what you are creating and as you know that you are creating this yourself within this power, within this understanding, within this, this focus and force of truth. And as you create this prosperity, you're moving towards focus. It's, it's a transformative focus that has you moving away from temptation and into your reality. So it's moving away from the temptation of the world. It's moving away from the temptation of expectations of others. And it's moving you towards the reality of what you want. And it's, excuse me, and it's saying, I am not going to sell myself for what is not right for me. I'm worth more than that. And I am worth my respect, my understanding, and my truth. And as you see this, you move towards being very close to achieving your goals. You are, you are very close to achieving your goals. And that leads you to the ten of earth. Prosperity that lasts for generations. Prosperity that calls to you and moves you forward. And as you step into this prosperity, this knowledge, you step out of your comfort zone and you take time to heal. You take time to connect because you know that when you step forward, there is no going back. I mean, you can technically go back, but it's not going to feel right. It's like once you step into this new reality, you won't feel comfortable going back to the way things once were. And so as you embrace this new truth, you embrace the king of the moon, right? You embrace the lunar god. And this is the masculine, the power, the force, the, the determination. And it has you moving forward with your knowledge, with your understanding, not backing down from the truth of yourself, embracing the power that is you. And it brings you to the new moon in Aquarius, bringing love into the situation as you embrace what you desire as you embrace your fears, you know, your apprehensions, but also you embrace the kindness of your soul and the beauty of your dreams. And you see that as you bring love in, into the situation, as you say authentically, I cannot move away from my heart. Because for you, Cancer, it's almost like taking away a piece of yourself. If you move away from the connection with your heart's truth, with your heart's power, you move away from the connection of you. And that's what you're facing here. And there's a fear of being so emotionally invested in life, but there's also a fear of moving forward without purpose, without joy, without happiness, and without this beauty. So you're transcending fear to embrace love. And the love for you. It's not simply loving other people because that comes much more naturally. It's looking at yourself and being in love with you. And as you do so, you know that prosper prosperity lies ahead. And you know that yes, you're stepping out of your comfort zone to embrace this prosperity and move forward in this truth, but it is absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth it. I mean, there's a sense of there's no going back. Like after this, you're not going to be comfortable just with mediocrity. You're striving towards your greatness and towards your power. And yes, it's a lifetime strive. Of course it is. But it is something that is is you truly embracing you and living in, in the beauty of you. Your subconscious message for this time is the six of waters. 
So you have the six of air and you have the six of water. So the repeat of the number six talks about caring, compassion, understanding, nurturing. And here it's the mind and the heart coming together. Now the six of cups, the six of water, is looking at the past. And it's something within your past, most likely from childhood. Because it's funny, as resilient as everybody says children are, and yes, children are astoundingly resilient, so many of the scars that we carry come from our childhood. So here with the six of water, it's looking at the reflection of things. And what's so cool is that if you look at her reflection right here, it's not the same person. This person, which her face is hidden, the only thing that you can see is that she has long gold hair, right? And she does not. So what you're going to see is when you reminisce, it can be that you're making things in your mind. They're like, they're different than the way they actually were. And so be very, very con conscious of falling into kind of like the idealization of the past because that can be something where you sit there and it'll never measure up to the present because you're knowing this reality, but the past has that rose colored glasses to it or, oh my gosh, things were so much better. There's a sense that, no, they weren't. They were different. They might have been maybe a little bit simpler, maybe, you know, not as intense, but it wasn't better. And you might say, okay, well, you know, I'm going through a really tough time now. The tower time that I'm hungry to leave is a time of chaos and change and disappointment and everything in my life has fallen apart. I mean, this can go from divorce to like loss of jobs to everything like that, you know, can come to the table. And you might be saying my past was a lot better because I wasn't dealing with this nonsense. And I mean, that's completely fair. So here it's also saying that as you move forward, all right, and as divinity pushes you towards change, you are going to find that the power that you're stepping into surpasses the safety of the past. It does. Or the, familiar, the familiarity, I'm saying that word wrong, of the past, like what was once comfortable. So here you are moving forward in power. You are moving forward in your truth. And you're looking at what you desire. And it's not going to be living up to memories anymore. It's going to be living towards goals and to a connection of, you know, kind of your Artemis self, your goddess of hunt, your goddess of the hunt, your goddess of the moon, of the evolution, of your independence and your freedom. And this leads you to your subconscious Luna message, which is nourishment, which re reiterates the number six, nourishing what you desire, what you want, what you need within yourself and your soul, which leads you to the Luna message then of the new moon in Libra, which is a new romantic cycle begins. It can be that you fall in love that you, you know, start to see things just beautifully and serenely and powerfully. And it can also be that you start falling in love with your life. You know, you can meet a partner, but you start falling in love with you, your life, your joy, your joy, your, your sexiness, your power, your, your intuition. And that balance comes and that balance leads you. That balance leads you to a, a new romantic cycle of living. And it leads you to being comfortable with yourself, which is stunning. All right, Cancer, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. May you have a blessed moon. I love you all and stay safe. Bye.